It's, it's a really good question, David. And it's, it's interesting as, as we look at BIM. As you say, in the UK, we've been very much on our journey to define level two BIM. And I think it's interesting if you unpack the data sets behind BIM. We've got a mixture of graphical information, non-graphical and like data sets. So to make up the jigsaw, we've got three key components, if you like. And one of the things for me is that non-graphical data, the ability to be able to define it digitally, to be able to exchange it digitally and be able to validate it is really key. And this is where Kobe comes in. And for me, Kobe, Construction Operation Building Information Exchange. Okay, it's another acronym, but for me, it's those last two letters. It's an information exchange in a digital format. And I think one of the key things as we move on in terms of journey, it lets all people play. It's got, an early, it's got a nice, easy point of entry. So many ways of defining your data, many ways of actually exchanging the data, but also, I think, more importantly, many ways of actually using the data set within the Kobe format as well. I think in terms of the most simple definition, it's a structured data set. But uh, I always like the definition that Nick Nisbet, you know, obviously one of the fathers yeah. of, of BIM has, and they refer to it almost like a suitcase that was transparent. You could see all the compartments within that suitcase. You could put things in, maybe in terms of spaces, components within there. But you could then take that, that bag and you could take it to all the different stages and take things in of it and out of it. So to me, it's a great container system for taking information, especially if you like, you know, through all these stages of a plan of work, especially between, I think, construction and operation. But we often forget that Kobe can help, if you like, with our early decision-making process as well. It might be an area question, it might be a carbon question, but for me, it lets everybody play. It's a good question. As you say, we're, we're well on the journey now. You know, we're heading towards 2016, you know, the, the, the key government construction strategy. And, and I think it's interesting if you look at the key horizon lines we've had. You know, we went for a period of mobilisation, forming, as you said, a BIM task group, testing the hypothesis, but also building together these standards that define Level 2 BIM. The standards have really been quite important to us because it means it gives, it gives the supply chain everybody together access to that same data set that's really important. You know, that common data environment, yeah, yeah. people can access it. And we start to think about the early days, uh, if like of information exchanges, why as we've been talking about uh, BS1192 part four and the Kobe element and that has been so important. Are we getting there? Well, I think the hypothesis has been well tested now. Early adopter projects are cementing savings between 12 and 20%. I think we're doing a good job in terms of raising awareness within the supply chain through our various networks such as BIM4, so arguably, you know, we're quite there in terms of testing. There's still a huge job to do in terms of finishing off, but as of June of this year, lots of the components will be in place. All the key processes, tools will be in place and ready, I think, to start moving to that next horizon line. It's very much about the delivery of level two, and it's a, it's a staging post. You ask the question, you know, has it been successful? Well, we've got a pipeline. There's over 10 billion of public sector projects coming through at a level two maturity. Uh, we've got departments making regular savings, but for me it's also the marmite of them. Okay, what's a marmite? It's the added value things. Yeah. We're seeing a supply chain, a supply chain that's better collaborating, more innovative. There's reduced risk, I think, for all parties involved. And I think for me the main thing is, is I think we're really reforming construction. I think we're making a genuine difference in terms of the digitization. We're rebranding it and making it, I think, more innovative and technologically advanced, which I think is good for industry. And we said, you know, would we have got to level two? I think we would, but I think the government mandate has really helped accelerate it. I think in terms of international recognition, we're hearing from major commentators such as Patrick McClamey that the UK has been audacious in its strategy and probably simple elegance in terms of simple data drops right the way through. But we're generally now thinking about, you know, whole project life cycles. We've got a government construction strategy 2025. We've got vision, digital built Britain. So I think we're in an ideal place to keep continuing with the next part of that journey plan. I think it is going through probably one of the most significant and I think probably disruptive changes as well. When I say disruptive, disruptive by design. I think we're generally thinking about new ways of working. You know, it needs to be more efficiency. And I think it's say, so my role in industry. Now, you know, we work globally. We need to share information right across the globe. I would also say that the assets we build are becoming much more complex as well. So we need to have, if you like, you know, the technologies, the process to del deliver the outcomes that our clients want, to give them the most efficient outcomes in terms of what we're doing, but also I think to collaborate better. You know, it's not about a single team working in office anymore. It's about sharing information globally and much more rapidly as well to be able to compete. So it's key that we continue to unlock the benefits 
if you like, of BIM. But also, I think we're seeing more and more, it's not about BIM in isolation. It's about bringing BIM together, maybe lean working, libraries and components. So I think we're all starting to think about, you know, BIM as part of our whole ecosystem now in terms of how we deliver digitally as well as physically.